Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're here to present support and resource, resources for faculty research. Um, so we're going to give you an overview of our presentation today, and then we will get into um, a little bit more of what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to introduce myself and then turn it over to Liza to introduce herself. So my name is Emily Sharp. Um, I work here at the library in St. Louis. Um, my title is Head of Research Services, so I supervise four awesome librarians who work at our desk answering questions from our users pretty much all the time. And I'm Liza Dister. I am a coordinator at the Faculty Development Center also here in St. Louis. And I work on a lot of uh, programs with Emily to support research for faculty. Excellent. So I'm going to give a little overview of what we're going to be covering today. Um, we're going to talk about what we mean by research and some of the benefits of increasing your engagement. We'll talk about the university supports for research. We'll talk about internal opportunities for research and scholarship, so those coming from the university. We'll talk about external opportunities and resources. We'll talk about your research agenda. And then we'll talk about a couple of different venues for your research, so internal opportunities and then external conferences and publishing. So for those of you who are watching live, if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat box, um, chat with us, and we're happy to answer questions as we go today. So I'm going to turn it over to Liza to talk a little bit about research at Webster. So Webster takes an inclusive approach to defining research. And for instance, the, the website of the Student Faculty Collaborative Research Grant Program defines research like this. At Webster, research is defined broadly and includes artistic, scholarly, and other research activities fitting our variety of disciplines and majors. So if, if you're in the arts, your research involves you know, not working in a laboratory or in an archive or crunching numbers, but doing some sort of creative work, a performance, an exhibition, et cetera. If you're in a particular industry, your research might involve serving as a consultant for companies in your field, for instance. And if you want to know more about this, the Webster University Policy Handbook actually lays out the criteria by which faculty are evaluated for status review. If you're full-time faculty, you might have seen this before. But if you're part-time faculty, it's also it could provide an interesting framework for you as well because some of the internal opportunities um, for funding that we're going to be talking about refer back to this criteria, so it's useful to know. So in addition to teaching and service, this criteria lays out different areas of professional development and scholarship. And these four areas are scholarship of discovery, integration, application, and teaching. You might have seen this before. This is um, adapted from the Boyer model of scholarship. So if you can, you can see that under discovery, that includes things like producing creative work, uh, application, you see assume a leadership role in professional organizations. So all of these things are considered within the, the purview of scholarship. And we also just wanted to point out some of the benefits of, um, of increased engagement in research and scholarship in your field. So obviously there are individual benefits to you, professional development, visibility in your field, there might be increased engagement with your Webster colleagues if you do any sort of interdisciplinary research, or in increased engagement with Webster students if you're doing any sort of collaborative work, right? There are institutional benefits as well. There's greater visibility for Webster. You, your research contributes to the institution's reputation. But Webster also <clears throat> wants you to be bringing the latest research findings and developments from your respective fields into the classroom, not only so that students are getting fresh perspectives, that's important, but also because doing that provides really good opportunities for engaged learning for your students. So 
So when you can show your students how your own work in your field relates to what you're studying in the class, students really value this because they value you as professionals in your fields, and they really like understanding why course material is useful and relevant. So let's talk a little bit about the university support that we have for research. Emily is going to start by talking about the support provided through the library. Excellent. Thank you, Liza. Before I do that, I just want to mention that um, if you're watching this live, um, we've shared this PowerPoint with you. And if you're watching the recording um, and you have not received this, we're going to give you our contact information at the end. And if you'd like a, a email of this, if you'd like the PowerPoint file, um, you can email either of us and we will happily share this with you. We've also compiled this information in an online research guide and we'll share that link at the end of the presentation as well. So um, again, um, I work here at the library and our main source of support for full and part-time faculty is your liaison librarian. So each um, department, sometimes a whole school or college, has a liaison librarian here in the library. And we can do lots of different things to help you. So we have um, the opportunity for individual consultations. And those can take lots of different forms. So we can talk to you about your research interests and recommend um, books, journals. We can get you started on a literature review. Um, we can purchase um, books or DVDs or music um, for the library collection to have available to you. And the more that we know about what you're doing in your research, the more that you know we are exposed to different things that we could buy for the library, and we will buy those since we know you're interested in them. Um, the library also co-sponsors writing retreats, which happen about three times a year on campus in St. Louis. Um, and that is just a time for faculty to um, take some time and, and focus on their scholarship, focus on their writing. Um, if you are not in St. Louis, that does not mean that you can't um, participate in some of these things. We are always happy to talk to you by email, on the phone. Um, we can even set up another WebEx session if we wanted to, to talk kind of more in person, quote unquote. So I'll turn it back over to Liza to talk a little more about these other units. Yeah, so we also wanted to mention the Office of Research and Sponsored Programs, which provides internal support for finding external funding. Um, this office used to be called the Corporate Foundation and Government Relations Team, so you might be familiar with, with them under that name. They recently won this prestigious grant to establish this new office. So they can help you with everything from finding external grant opportunities to getting letters of support and approval if you need those in the grant application process. They can provide you with assistance submitting a more polished proposal. And then for projects that address some of the institutional priorities that are laid out in Webster's strategic plans, this office provides even more additional services, including things like um, assembling a, a team of research to apply for large-scale grants and then coordinating everybody's contributions to that grant. They provide support for writing proposals and assistance with grant reporting, et cetera. And as with the library, each school has a specific liaison in the ORSP office. So, and you can find those people listed on the, on the site that we've provided here. The Faculty Development Center um, does a lot of individual consultations, and you might know us because we provide support for instruction and for web enhanced courses, but we also work individually with a number of faculty members who work in the area of the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning, SOTL, in, in fields across the university. So you don't have to be someone who studies education to dip your toe into this area. We can help you identify research questions, um, help link you up with university resources, and point you in the direction of useful articles that are related to your interests, for instance. We also support faculty learning communities, that is, um, groups of faculty with the same interests. Uh, so we can help connect you 
so that you can form partnerships with others who are pursuing similar projects. In the past, we've had uh, an ethical reasoning learning community, a quantitative research community. Right now, we have a, an active R learning community, that, as in the coding language R. We also support the reflective teaching community, a group that meets monthly. So if you have any interest in forming this sort of group or participating in the existing ones, please feel free to contact me. And like Emily said, we also provide support through, um, through writing retreats, and we work with the library um, and with other units to, um, to support the yearly teaching festival. The Writing Center, you may know because they provide a lot of support to students. And many faculty don't realize that they also serve faculty mainly through individual consultations. So if you need another pair of eyes on something that you are working on, if you are looking for a little bit of direction or some organization in, in some of your research, you are welcome to set up an individual consultation with them. The Institutional Review Board, IRB, is responsible for protecting both human research subjects and then also the researchers themselves by assuring that everybody complies with certain ethical standards for the treatment of human subjects. So they provide research ethics training through this certification process that involves doing a course created by the NIH, and it gives you a certification that lasts for three years. So you can access that through their site. They also manage the IRB review process for research of research proposals. And if you work with human subjects at all, it's key that you submit your proposal prior to conducting any of your research because it can't be done after the fact, right? And we do this in order to comply with federal regulations about university research. Webster offers a number of internal opportunities um, for research and scholarship. And so we've compiled them here, and this chart sort of lays out what the opportunities are, about what the timeline is for, um, for proposals and for proposal submissions. And um, we, I just wanted to echo what Emily mentioned before, which is that we will um, we'll be sending you the PowerPoint. If you are um, if you are listening to the recording of this, you can contact us to receive the PowerPoint, and we also have compiled all of this information on a research guide. Um, so don't feel like you have to furiously be taking <laughs> notes to get this all down. So most of these opportunities are sponsored through the Office of Academic Affairs, and in one case, in conjunction with um, global program development. So we'll just talk for a moment about the faculty research grants. They're for full-time faculty members, and they are one year in length. So you submit a detailed project description and a timeline with your proposal, as well as a detailed budget specifying what you're requesting funds for, and also um, the, the contribution that this project makes to the scholarly community and to Webster. So the, the grants can be used to fund expenses such as research assistance, travel, material, supplies, et cetera. There are limitations on what you can request funds for, and they're spelled out in detail in the faculty research grants documents that we've linked to here. And then the corollary grant for part-time faculty members is the Adjunct Faculty Professional Development Travel and Research Funds, which was just initiated this year, actually. And the purpose of this fund is broader than the faculty research grants. So this one is to support research activities, but also professional development more broadly. So if you're a part-time faculty member, you can apply for funding to attend professional conferences, for instance. And then there are also funds available to support research activities, such as travel, materials, and supplies. The provost Faculty Fellows Program is for full-time faculty, and it's an opportunity for you to align your own interests with areas of um, strategic interest to Webster, as outlined in the Webster Strategic Plan, right? 
So what you do is you, you partner with a unit such as the Faculty Development Center, the Academic Resource Center, Academic Advising, the Office of Institutional Effectiveness or Study Abroad, and you partner with them to, uh, to work on a project that's of interest to you and of benefit to the university. And if you're interested in this opportunity but you, you don't really know where to start, the best thing to do is to probably contact one of the, one of the offices that I just mentioned and, um, and talk to them about what your interests are and they can help figure out a project that aligns with your interests and with the university's strategic plan. The Sverdrup Global Teaching Fellowship is an opportunity for faculty, both part-time and full-time faculty, to travel to another Webster campus in our worldwide network for a term or for a semester to teach and also work on some sort of project that benefits um, the hosting campus or Webster at large. <clears throat> So it's an opportunity for international travel and for fruitful collaborations um, across campuses. The Messing Faculty Award provides funds for full-time faculty to do a project over the summer that strengthens the curriculum of your department or that treats a topic related to teaching and learning. So if you're interested in um, doing any social work or in um, in working on curriculum, this is a, a, a great award for you to apply to. And then finally, we've also included students, faculty, collaborative research grants here because Webster considers these sorts, these sorts of partnerships to be really valuable, high impact learning experiences for students. And you as a faculty member are um, probably in the best position to help direct students towards this opportunity. Um, and students can request funds of up to $500 for supplies related to their research or for conference expenses with, with these grants. So it's a great opportunity for your students. So we're gonna shift gears here just a little bit um, and talk about developing your research agenda. So what we've tried to do is break down the research process that you go through with each project or paper and sort of talk through what that looks like uh, step by step. This is going to be, of course, different for every, um, every discipline, but we tried to kind of make it just a little more systematic so that we can talk through what each step look, looks like and maybe give you some um, ideas or, or tips here. So the first one where we start at the top is development of a research project, an idea, and doing initial research. So that usually means that maybe you have um, an idea, something that you are passionate about, something that you've already studied that you want to look at from a different angle or you'd like to do additional research on, something like that. And this is kind of the starting point. So you're gathering your information and the next um, thing that you come to is submission of proposals. So perhaps you have found um, a journal that is focused on this topic. You are submitting a proposal to write an article for the journal. Maybe you found a conference on this topic. You're submitting to present at this conference. Uh, the next one then is gathering of data or analysis. And so this is where it looks really different depending on what field you're in. So this could be that you are, you know, working with, with clients or with students. This could be that you are working in a laboratory. This could be that you are putting together a dance piece or working on a sculpture or a painting. Um, so this is going to take a lot of different forms. You know, it's not always doing a literature review and analyzing the literature, evaluating what you have. It, it's going to look different kind of for everybody. The initial presentation or peer review is maybe going to come in the form of working with um, a journal editor and some peers at that journal to review uh, an article or a book chapter or something like that. But it also could look like working with you know, other people in your department or professional colleagues that you know from a professional association or 
from a graduate program, something like that, and doing peer review that way. Um, and the external presentations might be, you know, a professional conference, um, a writing a book or a book chapter. Again, these might look a little different. Um, publication, I think, of course, is a little bit more uh, self-explanatory here. And sometimes when you present at a conference, that, co that goes along with publishing a paper. Um, it just depends. And then reporting is going to be um, maybe reporting to entities that you've received funding from. So maybe you've gotten a grant and you have to do a report or a budget or a combination of those two things. But I think also it's important to make sure that you're reporting this for yourself. So you're adding this to your CV, you're putting it in your tenure file or dossier, depending if you are up for tenure or not. Um, and ideally, you have a couple of projects going on at the same time. So you're not always kind of following one thing and then starting something new. Maybe you're working on a presentation for a conference and you have something new kind of entering this this pipeline, so to speak. So we're going to share a couple of more opportunities, venues for your research, and we're going to start with the internal ones. So um, we've just started a brand new um, opportunity on the home campus that we are hoping to start expanding um, the availability to everyone, so finding a way for everyone to participate in this this year. And it's called the Faculty Research Symposium. Um, last year, we held this in December. We're hoping to do the same thing uh, this year. But if for some reason we, we change our minds, we will, of course, communicate that um, through Webster Today, through some other venues as well. Um, the Teaching Festival, which both Liza and I have touched on, happens uh, in St. Louis. But we always have participation from lots of different campuses. and. That is actually happening next week, so definitely check out the schedule for that and, and tune in. Um, our Global Citizenship Collaboratory is something that happens in May. This year it is May 23rd and 24th, and that is uh, an event that happens in St. Louis. And then we also have the Research Across the Disciplines Conference, which happens twice a year in December and in May, and that is a time for students to present their, uh, their research that they've done, usually through the collaborative research grants that we mentioned earlier. And then, of course, there's always opportunities within a department, um, on our different campuses. Sometimes there are special conferences that pop up that are maybe being hosted in your city, something like that. So there's lots of, of other types of things that might be happening on campus that you can keep your eyes peeled for. And then for external funding, conferences, publishing, that kind of thing, um, we mentioned that you can chat with your liaison librarian to help you find journals in your field, um, working through your professional association to find external funding, to find conference opportunities, to find other things that they might be sponsoring is a, is a really good idea and really helpful. Um, talking with the Faculty Development Center staff about the scholarship of teaching and learning and opportunities in that field. Um, and on the slide, we say that you should try to have um, something in every area of the cycle. That might be a little too ambitious. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think most of us like to sleep at night. So, so maybe like two or three projects in the cycle, maybe not something at, at every single point, right? Um, so. We have shared a lot of information with you today. Um, Liza and I have put together this research guide that has a lot of the links that we shared. It has some helpful books that you can access most of as electronic books. It has some journal articles. Um, we've also put our contact information on here. Again, if you're watching the recording and you'd like a copy of the PowerPoint, please email us and we're happy to share that with you. Um, and then we'd also just like to highlight a couple more online training opportunities. So this month we've got two more that I think would be really great. They're actually on the same day. Um, 
optimizing your research footprint in the online landscape. This is going to talk about how to use some tools like Google Scholar, um, o ORCID, which is a number that you associate with yourself, and it's a way to share your research. Um, and then Mendeley 101, we are switching to a new citation management system called Mendeley. Um, there's a lot of really great opportunities with this in addition to citation management. This is going to introduce you to that. And as always, feel free to sign up for these. Even if you can't attend, we will send you the recording and we'll send you some more information. Um, but we really appreciate you joining us today. And again, if you have any questions, you can feel free to, to type those in the chat box. But, but thank you so much for being here. And please don't hesitate to get in touch with us if there's any questions that we can answer or, or any way that we can help you.